Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Van Maren Show on LifeSiteNews.com. My name is Jonathan Van Maren, and today we're going to be talking to an abortion survivor. We've had several abortion survivors on this show over the past year. Their stories, I always find, are an incredibly powerful reminder of who it is that we've lost and who it is that abortion has taken from us. But Claire Colwell's story is different than most. And one of the reasons for that is because although she survived an abortion, her twin did not survive an abortion. So coming up, here is my interview with Claire Colwell, a survivor of abortion. All right, just to start off, tell our viewers a little bit about yourself. My name is Claire Colwell, and uh, I'm adopted. I grew up always knowing that I was adopted. Um, it was a really positive thing in our home. I, I remember my parents telling me that I was wanted, that I was loved, that I was chosen by them. Um, and so I met my birth mother 10 years ago and found out something that changed my life forever, something that I never expected to find out. In fact, I thought the worst thing that will happen when I meet my birth mother is it won't be picture perfect or she won't want to meet me. Um, and, and I found something out that wasn't picture perfect, um, changed, changed my life, but it was the most defining moment of my entire life. Now, when does, when, like, let, to backtrack just a little bit, actually, when was the first time you heard the word abortion? Because you grew up in a pro-life home, did you not? I grew up in a Christian home, and knowing that I was adopted, knowing that having a family was a gift was something that we talked about often in our home. Um, but I can't remember ever talking about abortion. In fact, I know that I never heard about it from the pulpit of my church or not from my parents that I can remember. Um, thinking about abortion, uh, just growing up, I thought nobody in my family will ever be affected by that. Um, and so I was very wrong. When I met my birth mother, I found out that I was affected by abortion. And that was the first time I really thought about what is happening in our country. So when did you start looking for your biological mother? I started looking for my biological mother in December of 2008. And so I, I got a call from my adoption agency that she wanted to meet me on Christmas Eve of 2008. And uh, I met her in March of 2009 for the first time and then saw her again in May of 2009. And that was the moment, uh, the trip, when I went to visit her, when I found out that I had been affected by abortion, when I didn't know for 21 years. So, so how, did, how did that come up? How did you start to find out the actual story about how you ended up in your adoptive home? My birth mother uh, sat me down after I gave her a gift. Um, I had written a card that said, thank you for choosing life for me and gave her this gift. I wanted it to be something that kind of tore down the lies that maybe she believed about herself, that she wasn't a good enough mother because I wanted her to know that she was the best mother for me, for what she had done for me and giving me my family and giving me my life. I had an incredible upbringing because of her choice to give me my family and my life. And I remember giving her this gift and, and watching her read the words on that card mm -hmm. and something instantly changed in that moment. And she said, Claire, I need to tell you something. Um, your, your birth story is, is different than, than what you know. And I remember thinking like, what, what's so terrible about this gift and, and what, what could she be about to tell me? You know, I knew right. she was 13. I knew she was young. Um, but I never imagined what would come out of her mouth. She looked at me in that moment as she said, I need to tell you something. And I saw this deep pain in her eyes. And it was something that I had never seen before. Um, I knew I had never experienced that type of pain. And we walked into this room and I remember she was shaking. She was trembling. 
and she had tears streaming down her face. And we sat on this bed and she turned to me with, with tears in her eyes and, and began to tell me about being pregnant at 13 and how her mother um, was pretty abusive to her. And she never remembers her mother hugging her or telling her that she loves her. In fact, when she told her mother that she was pregnant, her mother said, the only choice for you is to have an abortion. That's what we're going to do. And, and you're not going to tell anyone about it. And we're going to pretend like this never happened. Um, and so my birth mother was taken to a local abortion clinic that day, and she had a D&E dismemberment abortion at 20 weeks. And they told her that day that her life would go back to normal, but it never did. A few weeks went by, and uh, they said, she said that things didn't seem right, that she felt like she might still be pregnant. And so mm -hmm. she went back to the doctor, and they told her that, I had survived her abortion because she had been pregnant with twins and because they had missed one of the sacks. And so I was born at 30 weeks. I had a dislocated hip and club feet from being premature, from being a twin. Um, I like to say that those are my daily reminders of being a twinless twin and of being an abortion survivor. But you can imagine like what is going through my head at this moment. Um, staring into this woman's eyes that that had this pain i mean it's it's indescribable still today to to even tell you about what i saw that day in her um but she said nobody asked me what my choice would have been nobody even spoke to me in that moment in fact the doctor never even spoke to her in that abortion room and um i i realized my life was a miracle and, and this was not turning out how I expected it to. Right. Um, but I'm, I'm grateful that she did share that with me that day. And it was something that she had been holding on to for 21 years. She was ready uh, to tell me to, to open that back up for herself um, and, and reconcile what had been done to her and what had been done to me. What did you say to her when she told you that story? Ooh, I, I don't remember what I said in that moment. I, it, I know my head was spinning and I, I felt like I was in a movie and, and this couldn't be real. I, I had never really thought about the issue of abortion. I definitely had never heard of anyone surviving an abortion. I would come to find out that there are uh, many people who, like me who have survived abortions. Um, I think the loudest thing that I heard in that moment was the regret and the pain that she right. had. And it wasn't until I got home that I began to talk about it with my family and began to process it for myself, what that meant for me. I survived something that was meant to take my life and I missed out on this incredible relationship with my twin, the person I would have been closest to all my life. But in that moment, her pain, her tears, her trembling, that's all I could process. And the fact that God had spared my life for a reason. And I didn't know what that looked like yet. Had your, had your adoptive family known that this was your story? My adoptive family did not know. We had very little uh, paperwork on my adoption because it was a closed adoption and so we knew that my birth mother was young, but we didn't know any details surrounding my birth story or surrounding the reason that I was placed for adoption. We were just grateful that we had our family. And so this shocked all of us um, and absolutely changed our lives. It was a big wake up call to realize that our family was a gift. Our life was a gift. My life is a miracle. And I, I'm a mother now, and, and I look at my, my daughter. I have four children, um, but I have one biological daughter. And I look at her and think, gosh, she wouldn't be here if that abortion had taken my life. And so the, the reality really set in of what does this mean? Yeah. And what does it mean for so many other people that may or may not know 
their story surrounding being affected by abortion because I didn't know. My family didn't know. So what was it like trying to process that, especially if you hadn't thought about abortion a whole lot? You grew up in a Christian home. I call people those, it's sort of like a dormant pro-lifer or an instinctive pro-lifer. It's something that is part of the package, but something you've never paid any attention to. So what was it like for you to process it over the coming weeks and months? I uh, realized pretty quickly that there was a plan for my life that I could not stay silent because I realized how this affected me, how this affected my birth mother and her tears moved me to action. Um, her pain moved me to action. What I was missing moved me to action. And we realized that we had been sitting on the sidelines and doing absolutely nothing for 21 years um, about something that was affecting people in my home, in my church, in my community, in my neighborhood, um, in, in my school. And we realized that I had to do something, but it was a process because I had to think about, gosh, why, why me? Why me and not my twin? Why did I survive? Why did this happen to my birth mother? Why did nobody speak up for her? And I had so many questions and so many unanswered um, prayers in that time, in those months after I went home and, and began to process what this really meant for my life. Um, but I realized that it was okay that I didn't have these answers. It was okay that things weren't perfect because something beautiful could come out of something that was meant for our evil, something that was meant to take my life. And so I reached out to local um, organizations that were helping women and were pointing them in the direction of people who wanted to come alongside them mm -hmm. and offer them support and empower them to know that they could be a mother or they could place for adoption. They could carry this pregnancy to term. They didn't have to take the life of their child in order to live a happy life or be successful. And so I, I turned to them and I began to process what does it look like for me to step out in faith and share what happened to me with hope, with grace, um, through prayer, but also speaking truth. Because a lot of people, they, they just turn the other way. Mm -hmm. That's what we did for so many years. For 21 years, you know, you see something that's, that's so painful, that's so unjust, and it's too hard to process. It's too hard to face the reality right. of what is actually happening. So you just keep scrolling or you go on with your life and, and say a little prayer and hope that someone else does something about it. But I realized that I had a story that could give a name and a face to the issue of abortion, to that unborn child. Because when you look at my face, you're literally looking at my twin. You're literally mm -hmm. looking at the face of an aborted baby. And when you hear my birth mother's story, you're hearing the story of hundreds of thousands of women who have experienced abortion, who have been lied to by the abortion industry or forced to have an abortion or just didn't know didn't have someone standing up for them and they desperately wanted someone to. And so I realized that I had to do something that my story, the story of an abortion survivor, the story of a twinless twin mm -hmm. because of choice um, could, could speak louder than words um, because it did to me that day. And so I haven't held back. So we've had several abortion survivors tell their stories uh, on this show over the over the past months, and, and every story is a little bit different. We had Gianna Jessen on just before Christmas, Melissa Odin on a few months before that. And one of the things that makes your story different, I remember the first time I heard your story, it was actually at a conference in Vancouver um, that you came to speak at. And it did strike me that one of the things that makes your story different is because is because you were a twin, because it was an unsuccessful abortion in the same way that it was for Gianna, but it was a successful abortion for somebody else, which it cr just it creates an entire an entirely different uh, narrative for your story. So, what has it been like for you to process the idea that you did 
have a twin, dealing with a, a sense of loss that you never realized that you never realized you were missing anything until until years and years and years later. So what's it been like to try and work through that? It's been an interesting process. I Obviously, I can't imagine being a twin because I, I haven't lived any of my days with that person here on this earth. Um, but I realized that every single day when I look in the mirror, I look at someone else, someone else that isn't here because of abortion, someone else that isn't here because people were silent, but because people didn't stand in the gap for my birth mother. And I realized that that person, my parents would have adopted him or her. And to think about what my family is missing because of that one choice, because of the fact that the abortion was successful on my twin, it's, it's been a process of grief. Um, Mm -hmm. But it's also been an empowering story because I am able to leave a legacy for my twin, for my birth mother, for my family name. And I know without a doubt that I will be able to meet my twin again one day when I get to heaven and um, that he or she is up there with so many other children um, that didn't have the same chance as so many of us has. And so it's really made it real for me um, what we're missing today in our culture because my twin is not here. And, and what the domino effect of that is, um, what generational effect has it had because of one person that is missing because my twin isn't in our family. Um, but there's, there has been some survivor's guilt um, just because I think, what if, what if my twin could have changed the world? What if my twin could have made an impact? Um, what if I had had that person that I felt this longing for as a child because I did feel something was missing? In fact, I used to ask my parents, why don't you adopt another baby? Why don't we you know, have another sibling? I would have loved that. And I think that was a longing for something that deep down, I was missing and just just couldn't put it to words because I didn't know that I had been a twin. Um, But I I still go back to the fact that even though, even though my twin was successfully aborted, even though I survived, I know that um, there is a bigger plan and there is a purpose. And I trust in God who wrote this story for me that he he knows what he's doing and one day he will come back and he will make all things right again what do you remember of the first time you told your story publicly i do um the first time i told my story publicly was about five months after my birth mother told me about her abortion um I was really wrestling with if I, if I should, um, how I would even share something like that, if it could even make an impact. But I was approached by uh, some groups that saw the impact that my story could have. And I shared my story publicly for the first time with just a small youth group. And I was sitting in this chair and I had my notes and I was, I was very nervous because I'm an introvert. I, I actually planned to be a nurse, like a one-on-one home care nurse. Um, never imagined I would speak or share my story with thousands and thousands of people. Um, and so I was sitting on this chair and sharing my story with these middle school and high school kids, maybe a hundred of them. Right. And I watched as the light bulbs went off in their head, as they connected the dots of, okay, the unborn child is someone that grows up to be someone. And that someone is sitting right in front of us. And I watched the impact that that could have on just a group of a hundred high schoolers that were ready to fight for what they believe in, that were ready to stand for truth in the midst of the culture that we live in. And I realized that day, this is, this is good. Something evil can be used for good. And so I never looked back. 
I've continued to share my story for the past 10 years. That was almost exactly 10 years ago. Okay. So how did you, how, how, practically speaking, how did you get involved in the pro-life movement from there? So I, before I met my birth mother, a couple months before, I stopped and asked these people that were actually praying outside of Abby Johnson's abortion clinic in Bryan College Station. That's where I was going to school. Okay. And I lived directly across the street from the Planned Parenthood there. And I didn't know what Planned Parenthood was. I certainly did not know that they provided abortions. But I saw people out there every single day. And so I stopped and asked them one day what they were doing. And they told me. And I thought, I agree with that. I, I like that. But I don't, I don't want anything to do with that. I'm an introvert. I uh, certainly don't want to get involved in a controversial issue. And so I walked away thinking, that's great for them. They can do that. Um, but, but that's not for me. And little did I know I would meet my birth mother just a couple months later and find out that I survived her abortion. Right. And so I went back to those people that were praying on the sidewalk. And um, it was Sean Carney with 40 Days for Life. And okay. Abby Johnson had just left her job at that abortion clinic. And so I walked into a room with a flyer with my story on it. And I said, can y'all use this? Because I just found out that I survived something that was meant to take my life. And I would love if, if this little flyer could help women um, make the choice to keep their baby or make the choice to place their baby for adoption um, because abortion has hurt me and my family. And little did I know I walked into this room with these incredible people who were doing something about this, who were making change in our culture for life. And so I began to um, share my story with those people. And I traveled with Abby Johnson for her first year of speaking, and I slowly began to share my story. And it just developed from there as people were able to put a face with the unborn right. child. Uh, through my story. And so um, I've done about 20 to 30 events per year since then. So what was it like for, for your mother in the meantime, rewinding a little bit, um, your story <clears throat> from your adoptive parents picking you up, but not knowing where you came from. Um, obviously uh, it start it, 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 ha it was, it was quite beautiful, right? Adoption is a beautiful thing. And you got to end up with, with this family that you, you love very much. Um, but where you part ways, we're talking about a very, very young girl who's just undergone an abortion and had her surviving baby, um, taken away from her. What did her story look like over the years in between that moment? And when you finally met her, my birth mother had a, a really hard life. Um, her mother dropped her off at the adoption agency and never came back. Um, she delivered me on her own. She never went home after she placed me for adoption. In fact, she got married at a young age and continued to have children um, longing for what she had lost. Right. And there were years in between um, where she just raised her family and uh, she married an incredible man who helped raise her children and uh, they have one daughter together my youngest half sister um, but she just tried to go back to life as normal as she could and pretend like this never happened because that's what they told her to do uh, but she she definitely had a road of healing for herself um, because life just doesn't go back to normal, especially after you experience an abortion at 13 years old, definitely after your baby survives the mm. abortion. Um, and then you're, you're told to place that baby and give that baby away to another family. Um, life just never did go back to normal. Right. Uh, but when we reunited 21 years later, as she began her healing journey and she was able to say, okay, Claire, Claire forgives me. Claire sees what I experienced, but not only that, I'm being told that God 
forgives me. And so she was able to wrestle with those things and work through those things over uh, these past 10 years since I met my birth mother. And she has now publicly shared her story. And it's been incredible to watch as there has been so much redemption and people are able to see the mother that's baby survives an abortion. She is worth fighting for. She is worth speaking up for. Nobody should have the story that she has. Nobody should walk the face of the earth as an abortion survivor or as the mother of an abortion survivor. Um, but that, those are the cards that we've been dealt, and that's the story that we have. And so it's been neat to watch her be able to finally um, have the courage to share what happened to her and how difficult and hard that was. Have you had other people who are also abortion survivors reach out to you as a result of hearing your story or hearing of your story? I have. Um, in fact, in November, my birth mother came to see me speak for the first time. Mm -hmm. And in the audience, uh, a gal came up to me and she said, Claire, our stories are, are pretty similar. She said, I was placed for adoption from another country. And I found out uh, through my medical records that I survived an abortion. And I have been meeting more and more people um, as I share my story that reach out to me or reach out to Melissa, um, another abortion survivor that you mentioned earlier that runs the Abortion Survivors Network. And it's been neat as we've been able to connect with so many other survivors. But we know that many don't know. Um, just like me, for 21 years, I didn't know. And so I think that there are far more abortion survivors than we realize just because their parents haven't told them or they simply just don't know. What's one of one or two of the stories that you you've heard that that you wish other people would know about? I find I found that when I when I joined the pro life movement, it's almost like there was this world of stories, but this world of pain. Uh, beautiful stories, awful stories, revelations of just grotesque things that were taking place as we all go about our day, not thinking about them. And I find that 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 world seems inaccessible to so many people because I'm sure you feel the same thing. Once you get involved in the pro-life movement, you're like, how did I not know of all of these things that were going on? And this sort of like unseen culture war that's going on in the background uh, the entire time when most people, as you said, you never heard it, heard about it off the pulpit. Most people say they've never heard about abortion, uh, you know, at their church or, or in their religious community. And so, so what's it like to hear these stories and what impact do you think those stories would have if more people could hear them? The impact is huge. I mean, it just humanizes the issue. I mean, you cannot sit next to someone that has had an abortion or experienced abortion in some way and see their pain and see their tears and hear the regret that they've experienced because of one choice that they either made or was made for them. Mm -hmm. um, you can't sit next to them and not empathize, not see the ramifications of what has happened to them, what, is ha what we're missing because of that one choice. I, I talk to women all over the country that have, that have had abortions that regret them, but not only that, I talk to men all over the country who were not given a chance at fatherhood because their girlfriend or their wife went and had an abortion and they didn't have any say and they regret not being a father. And a lot of times they don't realize that until they grow up and, and have kids of their own and they realize, okay, I could have been a dad. I could have done that. What would that child be like now at 10 or 20 or 30 years old. Um, and then you hear stories of people that actually worked in the abortion industry and participated in abortion procedures. And through my experiences with some of my closest friends who did participate in abortion in some way, working in the abortion industry, I realized that those people are human too. Those people had a heart to help women and they were lied to and, and they didn't know what they were getting into. And then they got into the abortion industry and realized what abortion really is, what it really does to someone like my twin. When that abortion tore my twin's body apart limb by limb, 
and they realize, I can't be a part of this. This is taking innocent life, innocent life that grows up to be somebody like me, like my twin would have been. And so there are so many different ways that people have been affected by abortion and they are, they all go back to the same thing. Abortion has hurt us. I've never met someone that can say abortion. It just gave me life because every person that walks into an abortion clinic, they leave missing something, something that would have changed their life something that would have given them purpose. And um, that has been, it's been hard. It's been very heavy for me. Um, but I'm grateful that I've been put in a position where I can speak to that unborn child. I can speak to the forgiveness that I have for my birth mother. And I can speak to the hope that as more and more people uh, start sharing their stories, as more and, pe more, and more people start listening to our stories of how yeah. abortion has hurt us, that we will see a cultural change um, in our country where we do value life. So final question, as somebody who survived an abortion, somebody who lost a sibling to abortion, somebody who has seen her biological mother suffer through post-abortion syndrome, what would your message to all the listeners and viewers be? <clears throat> There's hope. And there is healing after an abortion. Um, something that hurt us um, can be something that is redeemed, something that can be used for good, something that can be used for change. And so I would encourage anyone that has experienced an abortion in some way to reach out. Um, but not only that, even if you haven't experienced abortion, I would encourage you to get out of your comfort zone and do something about it. We're living in a time where for far too long, all of us have just sat here on the sidelines, just like I did for 21 years. And we've waited for somebody else to do the job for us. Right. We've waited for somebody else to stand in the gap for the woman like my birth mother, for the woman like me. And so I would encourage you um, that now is not the time to sit back and be silent because children are losing their lives to abortion, to choice, just like my twin did. And it is going to take all of us, Christians, people of faith, people of conscience, to come together and unite on this issue and stop fighting about how we should do it because the only way to do it is with love, with hope, with grace and with speaking truth um, in love. Claire, thank you so much for taking the time to share your story with us. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was my conversation with abortion survivor Claire Colwell. We hope you enjoyed this conversation. If you want to hear more conversations with abortion survivors, pro-life activists from every corner of the movement, uh, thinkers, intellectuals from the ivory tower to the streets, on The Van Maren Show, we're discussing the big ideas about conservatism, about the pro-life movement, about religious liberty, and all of the other issues that animate our world today. Thanks so much for joining us, and we do hope you'll join us again next week.